Art Vlog! Welcome to the Art Vlog with me, George Dopamine. The Art Vlog takes you into art exhibitions and galleries all over the country and beyond, reviewing shows and also reviewing the overall gallery experience. If you're an art lover or just somebody who sometimes likes visiting galleries, then I really hope you will subscribe to the Art Vlog. This is the first Art Vlog new for 2020 and over this year we're hopefully going to take you to uh, multiple galleries and shows. Today we are at the Royal Academy where we're going to be reviewing the show Picasso and Paper. This magnificent building is um, home to many of London's top exhibitions. It's very, very easy to get to, halfway between Green Park Tube Station and Piccadilly. Buses also run past. I have mixed feelings about this show before having gone in. Picasso is obviously an artist who has been shown many times in London over the last decades. Um, I personally went to the 1932 uh, exhibition at Tate Modern, uh, which was a huge exhibition just focusing on one year in his prolific life. Um, we've also been to see uh, exhibitions on his ceramics. And obviously, Picasso was a polymath. He was a ceramicist, a painter. He worked with textiles and sculptures as well. And when I saw this exhibition, I wondered, are the Royal Academy scraping the barrel a little bit, trying to bring together scraps from his studio that not have, been, have not been shown before. After all, this is a man that produced 50,000 works, including nearly 2,000 paintings. Um, this artist, you could argue, is maybe overexposed, so I'm really excited to see if the Royal Academy have been able to make a valuable exhibition out of an artist who is, who is un almost universally known. He's undoubtedly the most influential um, artist of the 20th century. I also have a little bit of a confession to make. Picasso um, I can admire and I love his experimentation from the blue period, the rose period, through to cubism um, and onwards to his neoclassical uh, 1930s. But he's not somebody who has necessarily always moved me emotionally when I respond to him. He's someone who I can admire but doesn't necessarily stir the emotional juices in the way that some of my favourite artists like Rembrandt do. So um, I'm going to be really interested to see this exhibition and um, take you inside. Now I'm sure I won't be allowed to film in there, this is the Royal Academy after all but I will try and um, get an overview for you and then bring you the review afterwards. Often with some of the exhibitions here there are sculptures outside or works outside. Um, that does not true today of course but uh, we're looking forward to, to coming in anyway. One of the great pleasures of coming to the Royal Academy is that in the subterranean depths there's a very nice bar and um, I'm having one of my favourite lagers, um, Freedom Lager, which is absolutely beautiful. And I always have a very small drink to lubricate before going to, um, going to the gallery. But rather excitingly, you can see over there a glass of Prosecco, and this can only mean one thing. I'm going to be joined in a bit by the legendary author and art critic, P.J. Arthur. So, we're still down in the vaults of the um, Royal Academy, but rather excitingly, drinks are empty. The glass of Prosecco is empty, which means that PJ Arthur is in the house and she will be helping me review this show. So we are now going to head upstairs. Okay, so we're heading upstairs to the main galleries for the Picasso and paper exhibition at the Royal Academy. Wow, well we've just come out of the Picasso and paper exhibition at the Royal Academy and um, we just had a little light lubrication. You can see that now I'm joined by my esteemed guest for the very first Art Vlog, PJ Arthur. You saw her Prosecco or Carver actually glass earlier down in the vowels of the Royal Academy. Um, She's just had another Prosecco, which went down well, didn't it? Just a tiny one. Just a tiny yes. one. And I've had a very nice um, London Pilsner, um, which I don't think I've had before, but I enjoyed it. Anyway, the first thing I'd say about that exhibition is it's vast, um, but very well curated, I thought. It's a, um, it's a overview of Picasso's whole career, uh, from the blue period and the very early years, all the way through to um, all the way through to his death in, in, in some poignant last rooms called his last studio. Um, 
I, I have to come. I have to come clean and say I absolutely loved it. Um, it was really, really good, um, in my opinion. PJ, what did you think about it generally as a first sort of little snifty? Yeah, no, I, I liked it also because I didn't know that much about P Picasso. I've only ever seen his cubist works, really. Um, yeah. So to see those earlier periods, the blue period or whatever else, I hadn't seen those before. So that was really interesting for me. That's fantastic, yeah. I mean, I thought I, uh, that's really good, isn't it? And you saw the diversity of his work, didn't you? Definitely, well, definitely. Which is really good. One thing I would say, I mean, I think... Um, there was, because this was works on paper, there was a few great paintings and um, we will have a look at those in a bit. But um, lots of the work was done on newspapers, on bits of scraps of paper in sketchbooks. And so in lots of ways, this was the Picasso that was not public, that was not necessarily um, meant to be seen maybe and I really like that intimacy and the idea of the creative process you saw a lot of build up of sketches um, towards a big work um, you had an interesting perspective on that didn't you? Yeah well I agree about the uh, the materials that he used because uh, I, I have to say I never thought about um, having a uh, uh, cardboard um, yeah. as something that you could uh, paint on that was, yeah. that was pretty unbelievable and really. that someone like him would use yeah, yeah. well you know famous artists and all that but I did wonder and they'd whether why had he saved all those things all those little envelopes and all the kinds of things that he did save and um, it was like he wanted uh, and expected people to be interested in his life so he almost kind of hoarded all those little bits and pieces that the rest of us um, would just throw away so uh, it was interesting to see that and maybe the reason why it was included maybe because it shone a light onto maybe a bit of his character yeah and I think that's actually I hadn't thought of it like that but it's a really interesting point isn't it why did he keep everything um, because most of us chuck stuff away and most of this exhibition came from the Musée de Picasso in, in Paris and um, and they got basically all of his private archive when he when he died because he didn't leave a will and um, and yet yeah there was something kind of obsessive about the hoarding wasn't there mm. and, and, and and from a very young age as well it was sort of hoarded through, throughout wasn't mm. it his, his period he kept everything um, including stuff that, that lots of us would have chucked away and I think PJ's got a point there that in lots of ways this was an example actually of his own sort of epic sense of self-importance i don't think for me it detracted from the show and it, i mean honestly you need to probably visit it more than once don't you i think so there's so much to see so much to yeah. see and bits that were familiar certainly familiar to me is not a big fan uh, but lots of very different things as well although i do have to query about um including the um uh tearings the, the little pictures from the um uh, serviettes that he'd used and he, he kind of torn a little face in or whatever so I would query the, the one of all the other things that you might have included but I'm sure there was a good reason for that I like yeah I do I have to I disagree I, I like the fact for me it was kind of a sense of his obsessive desire to create yeah, okay. he was creating all the time he was creating mm -hmm. in restaurants he was creating in in bars he was creating at um, at home he was creating at the di at the dinner table um, it's, it's really interesting <laughs> but I do I do really recommend it and I think if you wanted to get I mean it was very long and very big um, and very detailed and took a lot of um, a lot of focus but it wasn't really I didn't find it overwhelming did you no but then I used the audio guide George didn't I oh, you did and yeah so would you recommend that I would definitely that, that guides you to 20 spots oh, um, and yeah, then discusses yeah. the work around it so I found that really helpful because um, I'm not sure I would have known where to start yeah. um, had it not been for that so yeah yeah oh that's really good actually and that's a good tip obviously the audio guide there is um, is, is to use uh, is really good to use um, and thanks, thanks PJ for that. And I, I think, um, yeah, I will be coming back definitely. It's on till April the 13th, um, so do come along. Um, I've got some pictures which I'm gonna show you in a second, and so I'm gonna just talk through those. The show curates Picasso's relationship with paper chronologically. It begins with these two charming animal cutouts of a dog and a dove, produced when Picasso was just nine. Um, and their sureness of hand and their spontaneity and um, their beauty our simplicity are replicated throughout the show. There's something quite moving about seeing the young Picasso at work in this way. After that, the first room focuses on Picasso's blue period um, and contains La Vie, a work that's never been seen in Britain before and was generously loaned from the Cleveland Museum of Art. In fact, this is a theme of, this, of the show, linking smaller and intimate works on paper with larger works such as this. One of my favourite rooms was room three, which had projected onto the wall Picasso's masterpiece, Le Demoiselle de Avignon, 
while the painting itself has not left you New York, um, it's it we can see it there and it's surrounded um, as you're about to see by studies and preparatory paintings and sketchbooks and, and we can begin to see an idea coming together and this is what I love about this show that the, the the preparatory work gives you a sense of Picasso's mind evolving towards um, what we consider to be the finished piece with its af very famous African influences um, seen as a very seminal piece of Western art. And yet you can begin to see the cogs that make up this overall work. So it's a really, really good room to sort of sit and absorb. And then you can see the painting at the end. Room four on Cubism, see sculpture being introduced and the literal deconstruction of... Um, familiar uh, objects and patterns um, into that into that cubist style which is so familiar it also contains a nice curat a curatorial device of a glass wall where you can see some more cutouts displayed um, linking back and looking very much back to those those first works of the dog and the dove that i showed you earlier and you can look at those from both sides as you can see here the sureness of lines in this self-portrait um, are pretty typical of that neoclassical period after um, the end of his cubist experimentations and um, it's quite a beautiful work, quite a fun work as well. One of the most spectacular works is the collage uh, Le Femmes à la Toilette, um, which famously portrays um, three of Picasso's most significant um, lovers and muses. It's a slightly disturbing um, meditation, um, but very, very interesting to see. And um, I particularly enjoyed as well some of the, you know, the doodles at the other end of the spectrum, things that were done on a whim on paper or cut out of bits of card or paper as well in different shapes, um, which, which pepper the exhibition. Um, room 10 um, it includes some works of, of Picasso's encounters with other artists. This shows Manet's Le Déjeuner de Herbe, he repeatedly worked over. And, um, it, you know, it's a really interesting, as an old man, he see, old, growing older, he was drawn um, to these great masterpieces, which clearly intrigued and challenged him. And he wanted to work through them himself and give different um, representations of these. The final bit of the exhibition is, is is called The Last Studio and we get to see um, the film Le Mystery de Picasso where he famously produces a work um, very, very quickly and it starts as one thing, then develops into another before metamorphosizing into its final incarnation. And right at the end of this room, you can actually see the work itself and it's a very, very special moment having seen Picasso produces very self-consciously, um, very, very confidently in front of camera um, to, to be able to admire the work and see it there now i'm not sure if you can see these in the dark you oh can. yes you can <laughs> and obviously me and pj are up in london and it is the 31st of january and um clearly it's a very important day in in, in british history and um although you know this isn't a political vlog um we obviously i think it's fair to say pj aren't we a bit sad we are a today. bit sad yes and um, i wanted to mention that purely because obviously picasso is a consummate consummate european um, born in southern Spain, in Malaga, uh, lived and saw his sort of hometown as Barcelona in Catalonia and then spent a lot of his time in France and um, even travelled to England um, once, faithfully, and we'll talk about that maybe in a future vlog. But um, yeah, it just sort of feels symbolic and, and it feels positive to be seeing a great European artist today of all days, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's a good excuse to wear your glasses, George, as well. Listen, <laughs> five euros from the European Parliament, you can't complain. <laughs> no. Anyway, I will see you back at Dopamine Heights. We'll have a look at some of the pictures and going to review it in, in, in more detail um pj is now going to be departing back bye. to pj heights yeah see you soon see bye you bye. soon bye bye everybody so um i am back here at dopamine heights and i've given myself a night to sleep and reflect um on the picasso and paper show that i saw with pj arthur at the royal academy in london last night and having reflected on it while I've been having my, having my tea and um, breakfast this morning, I have to say I think it's probably my favourite Picasso show. Um, certainly the favourite Picasso show that I've seen um, over the last 20 years. I obviously haven't seen them all globally, um, but certainly in London. And the, the reason is, for, uh, I suppose, twofold. Firstly, um, it was a real privilege to see a chronological um, viewing of this vast, special career 
um, you know, it's so un unusual to see um, works from when he was eight or nine and all going all the way through to his 80s and 90s. And I think, um, you know, the chance to see that, to see how he developed and evolved as a as an artist was, was a real privilege and, and it was special. So that was the first reason. And the second reason was because of the nature of the show, Picasso and Paper, it was obviously um, as close as I think we can get to to the intimacy of, of, of Picasso's creative mind as he struggled to produce the works that have made him world famous. I know I take the point that PJ Arthur said in her, her, her summing up yesterday, where she kind of said, raise the question, was Picasso ever um, really working in private? Um, it, clearly the fact that he kept everything, and this sh show is a testament to that, um, suggests that he was thinking about his legacy even when he was scribbling on a, on a, on a, a you know, piece of, of disused newspaper. But I think, you know, we can come to the conclusion that this was a, this was, his innermost thoughts when he was probably acting at his most spontaneous. And so we can see the development of, of, of art um, it, through the periods in this show. I would also say um, as a third, uh, third um, area of, of enjoyment that the show was really well curated. Um, the centering in some rooms around bigger pieces of work, even if they didn't have the work, um, was was clever and you got to see through his notebooks and sketches and rough bits of paper and wallpaper and sculptures um the development of his of his bigger ideas the ideas that i suppose we know him well for so that was a real pleasure as well and um so the three three great reasons to go and see this show i thought it was very well curated and paced there are over 300 works of of picasso's at this show and um, yeah i didn't even though it was a friday night and i've been working all week i didn't feel exhausted or overwhelmed by the show i wasn't flagging having said that i will definitely go back again before the 13th of april um, um, because it was a show which had so many pieces in from the Musée de Picasso that um, I didn't take them all in, obviously, and I will go back and see those. This is a show that I think has a very broad appeal, and it's sometimes not, it's not always it's possible to say that with shows. Um, on one hand, there was enough to appeal to the more general um person who's interested in Picasso or interested in art. You know, there was also at the other end of the scale a certain density um, to the creative process in, in the in the um, artifacts and, and pieces of work that they'd chosen, which I think would appeal to a, to, a, to a more academic interest. And bits of it reminded me of the Van Gogh and Britain show at Tate, um, Tate Britain recently, or a bit bit further back, De Stille at, um, at Tate Modern, you know, which were really seriously about about our history so I think there was this, this this broad appeal which which no doubt would do um well for its popularity um the show is um it, it's quite expensive as so many of these blockbuster shows in London are um it costs between 18 and 22 pounds um and is on till the 13th of April and I have to say I think that's worth it I mean it is it's a cliche to say this is a once in a lifetime show and it kind of feels like with so many institutions like the British Museum, the Royal Academy and the Tate, um, and Somerset House and, and others, um, all claiming once in a lifetime shows several times a year, that word, that, that, that term can be overused. But I think in this case, it is. Um, the Royal Academy, by the way, is open from um, 10 o'clock till six o'clock um, uh, every day, apart from Friday when it's actually open until 10 p.m. And obviously I went last night and I have to say it wasn't that busy um, compar compared to how I can imagine it might be at peak times on say a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. So, but it might be worth thinking about when you go. And, and that's something I would advise as well because it's a um, show with lots of focus on smaller objects and smaller pieces of work. So you do need to be able to, to have access to those. It's not like there's loads of massive paintings that, that the multitudes can gather around anyway it was a good show i enjoyed it i was pleased to go i suppose the final question i wanted to ask if you think back to the start of the review i said picasso was an artist i could admire but i don't necessarily warm to um and to a certain extent that that this show's kind of changed it a little bit um by seeing these works um in, in a sort of unfinished, unformed state and, and in a developmental stage. I, I suppose I got closer to the human Picasso and love seeing the film at the end, The Mystery de Picasso. Um, but he's still not up there for me in terms of how he affects me um, with Rembrandt and others, um, Goya and others. Interesting, he, he absolutely loved Goya. But anyway, it was a good show and I recommend it. Um, next week on the Art Vlog, 
be going to the ICA on, on the Mall in central London um, to review a show by an artist I know absolutely nothing about. It's his first UK show, Cameron Rowland. So we're going from a show which is a universally well-known artist to one who lots of you may not have heard of, and I certainly hadn't until I saw his show being advertised at the ICA. So I'm really looking forward to taking you there. Please do subscribe to the Art Vlog because it's um, there to try and spread the word about art, um, both in London, the South East and further afield. Um, if you have any comments, if you've been to see Picasso and paper, please do um, put them in the, in the um, comment box below and I'll try and respond. If you disagree with me, if you're disappointed or if you think I've undersold the show a bit, um, do let me know. But anyway, I'm going to give that show a 9 out of 10 over and art.